Hi guys, it is another hot, sticky, miserable dog day afternoon here in the end times. Somehow we have pulled into Wednesday, where are we, August 25th, 2021, where I guess we have gone from a hurricane flood watch warning three days ago to a heat advisory today what a difference three days will make and I can see the uh, the wildfire smoky skies have returned you know if it goes more than 48 hours you know we get a good rain through here and then you get one day of blue sky and uh, then if it's not you know dark rain clouds it's smoky shit clouds your choice uh, <laughs> so it should be a beautiful deep blue sky today <clears throat> is a smoky haze over the Finger Lakes of New York so anyway what I'm doing during this heat advisory is heading into Ithaca New York to sell <clears throat> I don't know about 200 ears of uh, my fresh picked organic non GMO silver queen corn and I'm gonna go uh, try to find a spot in the shade on the side of the road and sell this corn before some cop runs me off uh, so I go out there today you know I've been waiting and waiting for 90 days uh, I was a little suspicious yesterday when I was out there. I was blaming this corn down on the ground on the uh, flood a week ago. Although I didn't remember seeing it the day after the flood. So I go out there today, you know, it's gonna be, the, the prime picking days are gonna be for the next four or five days. Uh, today and tomorrow and the next day or the three you know pivotal days so I go out there and there's like 50 fucking corn stalks lying on the ground this morning that were not lying on the ground and I look and I don't know what it is I don't know if it's goddamn deer raccoons what the hell it is I don't think it's a bear or I'd really be fucked so what they do is <clears throat> kind of like those goddamn squirrels did in my with my peaches in in uh, Garfield, Texas. What the, whatever it is out there last night, what what it would do? So it would knock down a corn stalk onto the ground, and uh, then instead of you know like knocking one corn stalk down and eating that nice fresh sweet ear of corn. Uh, they would knock the fucking thing down and of course well I guess they were out there in the moonlight last night they would knock the corn stalk down they would take one bite they would rip open the fucking uh, corn husk they would take one big bite out of the middle of the ear and then go to the next one and knock it down and uh, so you know I mean I mean there's hundreds of ears of corn left out there in the field now uh, I mean I look at all of these corn fields I mean am I the only one uh, getting hit I mean there's miles and miles of these corn fields so I don't know what the hell it's gonna look like out there tomorrow when I go out there uh, but but you know if I pick the corn early it tastes like fucking cardboard. I have no choice but to, uh, you know, to leave it standing uh, for several more nights. But anyway, uh, so I'm dealing with that, your old organic farmer. So speaking of an organic farmer, I'm, uh, you know, being a doomer organic farmer, I, uh, I'm, I'm just going through the fossil fuel inputs into this uh, bunch of corn. 
Okay, this is just since I came on the scene. I, you know, this doesn't even include all of the fossil fuel inputs that went into this corn before I bought the seed. You know, I mean, some somebody had to plant the seeds, and they probably uh, went to the shop for the seed. You know, this goes on. Which came first? Uh, so already by the, by the time I bought the seed at the seed store in Ithaca, it had already gone through an entire cycle of planting, uh, harvesting, you know, planting, growing, harvesting, uh, processing, transporting uh, to get it to the seed store. Then, of course, I made this trip that I'm making now to Ithaca, uh, which is a 30-mile round trip to buy the seed. Uh, then, of course, the infamous story of the, uh, you know, of the fossil-fueled tiller, you know, the rototiller uh, that I use to till. Uh, the cornfield. Now there hasn't been much fossil fuel input since then. Uh, I, I weeded the cornfield twice with a hoe. Of course, I had to go to the uh, go to Ithaca to buy the hoe, and then you have all of the fossil fuel inputs that went into making the hoe that I used to hoe the corn, and uh, those knock-on effects. Uh, and so now uh, I am loaded the corn, you know, the seed that I bought in Ithaca, now I'm loading the corn up into my gas sucking truck and going back to within a few blocks of where I bought the seed and there's probably going to be, I'm probably going to do this four times. So. 120 miles of me transporting it, every single person who buys the organic uh, non-GMO uh, corn from me uh, over the next couple of hours is obviously going to come buy it in a fossil fueled car. Uh, I I'm guessing, I'm guessing probably easily that for every ear of corn, for every 50 cent ear of corn, there's probably a dollar's worth of fossil fuels in every one of my 50 cent uh, ears of, uh, of corn. Now, if I break even on this cornfield, particularly with this latest attack by this fucking nighttime assassin, uh, there's no way I'm going to break even, especially when you factor in the fucking uh, tiller going through my back windshield debacle. Uh, <laughs> but it's the best damn corn, so at least we're eating well. So get out there and enjoy your fossil fuel powered organic non-GMO corn while you still can, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around what it would look like, y y you know, if tomorrow the gas pumps got turned off. Tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> and th this is one organic cornfield. Uh, in the grand scheme of the global industrial agriculture machine, which is 100% dependent on fossil fuels, there is no such thing, no such thing as an organic farm from uh, beginning to end. Every single kernel of organic corn on this planet has a fossil fuel thumbprint right on it. And this is just one of a million reasons why we are so fucked. I was, uh, 
when I was loading the corn in my truck, my neighbor comes by, you know, the neighbor with the hip camp down. He comes by on his bike, you know, and we're talking about the sun being hotter. You know, it's just 82 degrees. Well, it was 78 degrees, and we were standing out there in the sun talking about how it's not supposed to feel, the sun is not supposed to feel this hot on a 78 degree day, particularly when the damn wildfire smoke is, uh, is filtering it out. And uh, he's going, yeah, he's going, uh, he's going like, he's going, he goes like, just one day everything just seems so fine in the world and then the next day it seems like we're fucked. It's, it, it goes, I just, you know, it's just hard to tell if everything is okay or if we're fucked. And I said, brother, it's easy to tell. I said, we are fucked. Uh, I said, we are fucked. Uh, but at least we, meaning the two of us, uh, hanging out on this smoky day. Uh, loading up organic corn. Uh, we have it better than most folks here in upstate New York in the end times. Uh, and you know, just looking around this planet, looking around the fucking planet. Uh, it's August 25th. It's 82 degrees on August 25th. There's plenty of wildfire smoke, but as far as I know, the nearest wildfire is in Minnesota. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the. Uh, I'm going to stick with the. Uh, the Finger Lakes of New York to live out at least the summertime. Here in the end times, and highly advise you consider moving to upstate New York uh, to live out your days. What I'm going to do for six months of the year remains to be seen. But right now, I'm off to sell some fossil fuel powered organic corn. Bye, guys.